So today we're going to be making some charcoal for the purpose of making sporting grade black powder. Now, typically the way I would do this and I've, the way I've done it in the past is I take our uh, vessel. I think people call it a crucible. What it is, is a house of color paint can. You take the lid and you drill a quarter inch hole in it. Now, if there is any paint or any residue on the inside of the can, you want to make sure you get that out. I used to just cut down whatever piece of wood that I was interested in trying and throw it in there, throw it on the fire and let it cook for a few hours. People have asked me if it makes a difference if you use green wood or seasoned wood. And yes, it does. You really don't want to use green wood if you don't have to. If you're in a pinch and that's all you got, then it will work, but it'll take longer to cook. And after you put it on the fire, you'll see it'll start blowing steam and fire out of that vent hole. And what it is, is any moisture or compounds in that wood is being cooked out of there. And you want to get as much of that out of there naturally, organically, by just letting it dry and season for a year or even longer, preferably, outside because otherwise you're just forcing it and you get a lot more compounds that are left in the wood that you really don't need or want. And it makes more fouling. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you have to, you don't have a choice, you can do it and it will work. But you really wanna try to get dried wood, seasoned wood, something to that nature. Now, we're gonna do this a little different. And I've seen a lot of literature and I've had people send me links to stuff about making charcoal specifically for black powder. You don't really wanna cook it too hot. In fact, it seems like, and this is debatable, I've seen a few different things, about 600 Fahrenheit, you don't want it really over that. In fact, some people say you want it more like 550. So we're going to use a turkey fryer, just a propane stove outside, and we're gonna monitor the temperature very closely. The wood we're gonna use is some alder buckthorn that was cut last December. It's December now, so it's been drying for a year. I stripped the bark off of it and I split it into small pieces. Again, the smaller the pieces in the paint can or whatever vessel you're using, the better. It's easier to cook out the stuff. If you're using something like a you know inch and a half or something wide piece of willow, it's gonna take longer to bake all of that stuff out of there. So split it into pieces, smaller the better. In fact, a lot of people prefer wood chips and that works pretty well too. So after we get it in there, <clears throat> We're going to put it on the fire and monitor the temperature and see how it goes. All right, so then seal it up and we're going to throw it on the fire. I'm just going to take it, set it right on there, and then we're going to monitor the temperature. With this. Two oh five. All right, so it's going on two minutes now, and we're at two twenty five. Yeah, yeah two twenty five. Okay, so we've been at this a little over eight minutes now, and it's right at five hundred, five ninety, five ninety five ish, depending on where you're pointing it at. At the very bottom, it's 550, but up here towards the top, it's closer to 5. So after it's been on the fire for a few minutes, it will start to blow steam out of that vent hole. And this is exactly what you're looking for. Now, if you're using green wood, you're going to get a lot more steam and it's going to take a lot longer. So the more dry it is, the less steam you're going to get and the faster it's going to cook. But this is what you're looking for. So we are at 26 minutes. It is at... 530 and you can see how it's barely smoking anymore which pretty much means that it is done that's what you want you want to be able to just push on it and have it break you want to be able to look right in there if you can see it and mm -hmm. not see any brown you want it all nice and charcoalized 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a real word. Here's what it looks like in there. Wow, it's hot in there. It is. Push on it. Yep, all that looks great. Yep, that stuff's done. Perfect. So, here it is. And this is what you're looking for. When you pick up one of these pieces, you want to be able to break it really easy and you want it all black. You don't want to see any wood fibers at all. And it should break apart just really easy with minimal pressure, just like that. And that should make some high quality black powder. So here it is right here. Now I know what you're thinking. That might not be a lot of charcoal and it isn't. In fact, if I had to take a guess on how much it weighs, I couldn't say for sure, but it's not very much. It's pretty light. But, you know, typically I would do a whole can's worth, you know, but this is mostly for demonstration purposes. Now, if you don't have the ability to monitor the temperature or do any of this other stuff, it's not the end of the world. And I've made a lot of black powder just by making a fire, throwing the can on the coals and letting it cook for a few hours. It works okay. It, it, it works fine. I shouldn't say okay. The whole thing about monitoring the temperature, mostly what it is, is you want to bake the compounds out of it, but there's a certain amount of resin and sap and some other stuff that will actually burn out too fast if you do it too hot. And it'll stay in there and it'll make more fouling. So now this stuff took, I think, uh, about 50 minutes, 48 or something like that. So under an hour to cook that batch of charcoal. Not terrible. Again, typically if I was doing it outside on open flame, I would throw it in there and just pretty much forget about it. I walk out there and check on it, you know, and I'll pick up the can and shake it or I'll move it around. But it's very, very common when I'm making charcoal that way, where that can, the bottom of that can where it's sitting on those coals is red hot, which I don't know, that's a pretty thin piece of metal, but it's got to be upwards of 12 or 1500 degrees to get red hot. So I don't know what the temperature is on the inside, but I imagine it's that or even hotter. So if you don't have the ability to monitor it like that, making charcoal the old fashioned way still works just fine. Now that this stuff is done, we can make our powder like we would usually with the same methods that I've used for quite some time now. And it works pretty swell. Now, this is sporting grade powder, what I like to call sporting grade powder. In fact, if you look on the can, Supreme Sporting Powder. Sporting meaning it's for muzzle loaders. It's used as an antique muzzle loader propellant, as I like to say. There are grades of black powder that are, they call them blasting powder. And there's a uh, pyrotechnic grade powder. Sporting powder is a higher quality of black powder. You can make lower quality black powder, and trust me, I've done plenty of that, and it works fine. But I've gotten to the point where I don't want mediocre powder. I don't want anything less than any commercial grade powder. So the charcoal is a very important part of that. In fact, it's probably one of the most crucial parts of making sporting grade black powder because you don't want to use something like mixed hardwood. I started off using mixed hardwood charcoal that you buy from Skylighter or one of those outfits. And it, it works okay, but it's not nearly as powerful as alder buckthorn charcoal. Now you make your own charcoal for black powder and it's a game changer. And I've tried all kinds of stuff. Uh, and people ask me often, you know, oh, well, have you tried this kind of wood? Have you tried that kind of wood? There's thousands of ones that I haven't tried. But the ones that I know work well and make the best velocity are alder buckthorn, which is the best I've come across so far, uh, Pacific willow, which is what I use most of the time, and any kind of grapevine. Grapevine, I think, is probably pretty easy for anybody to get, along with willow. I think willows grow all over the country. So... Anytime you can get a hold of willow or grapevine, if you can't get a hold of alder buckthorn, and I don't have alder buckthorn around here, I have to get it imported, which is why I usually use willow. Uh, that will make damn fine black powder. And again, it's made the same way. Strip the bark off of it. I, I recommend stripping the bark off of it. I, I didn't do any of that stuff at first. It does make a difference in cleanliness. It does make a difference in velocity after your powder is made. But making charcoal and having good high quality charcoal is a 
very, very important part of making sporting grade black powder. So I hope someone out there found this helpful. And if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, well, then go make your own damn video.